1997 will go down in history as one of the most pivotal years in the evolution of hip hop. The year began with millions of fans still grappling with the loss of superstar rapper Tupac Shakur, who was tragically shot in September 1996. Bringing 1996 to a bitter end and commencing 1997 on a sour note, most hip hop fans had no clue what 97 had in store for them. But just like the years before it, 1997 was an eventful year for hip hop, bringing with it both the good, the bad, and the ugly. In this video, we'll be going through some of the most notable events that took place in the world of hip hop in the year 1997. Our coverage follows the release of notable albums and singles that defined 97, as well as the stories and context that colored that era. Also, help us reach our first 100 subscribers by clicking that subscribe button. It's free and it's motivation to continue delivering you the quality content. Without further ado, let's discuss what happened in hip hop during 1997. January. 1997 began with the release of a rap-related movie titled Rhyme and Reason. Quite unlike previous rap movies at that time that focused on the rappers and their style of music, Rhyme and Reason was a documentary-style movie that delved beyond the rapper into his mind, revealing his thought process. On January 14, 1997, the original motion picture soundtrack of the movie was released. It debuted at number 16 on the Billboard 200 and peaked at number one on the top R&B hip hop albums in the United States. The album featured rappers like Busta Rhymes, The Dog Pound, KRS-One, amongst others. Exactly two weeks later, on the 28th of January, popular rapper Camp Low dropped his album Uptown Saturday Night under the record label Profile Records. The hit song from the album titled Lucini, This Is It, went on to color the start of the new year. February. The most notable event in the month of February was the posthumous award given to the legendary Tupac Shakur at the 24th annual American Music Awards. In this event, Tupac was named the favorite rap hip hop artist. With the award ceremony taking place four months after his demise, the award was received on his behalf by singer Brandy. At this point, many hip hop fans all over the globe were yet to come to terms with the loss of Tupac Shakur, yet no one was prepared for what was about to happen next. March. On the 9th of March, 1997, another event took place that would turn the music world upside down. Notorious B.I.G., the longtime rival of Tupac, was shot and killed in Los Angeles. The assassination of B.I.G. was too much for fans to bear, with many quickly pointing fingers at Tupac's entourage, believing they had a hand in Biggie's death. Later in March, precisely on the 25th, B.I.G.'s second studio album, Life After Death, was released. Fresh after Biggie's death, the album went on to be one of the best-selling albums of the year. Since its release, Life After Death has sold over 5.36 million copies in the U.S. alone, reaching 11th all-time platinum status. The album featured a list of hip hop stars including 112, Jay Z, Lil Kim, Mace, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and Puff Daddy. Critically, it was also a success as it garnered Grammy nominations for Best Rap Album, Best Rap Solo Performance for the single Hypnotize, and Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group for the single Mo Money, Mo Problems. Also in the month of March, before Biggie's album dropped, Scarface dropped his fourth studio album titled Untouchable. Released on the 11th of March, Untouchable debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart. 
The album included the single Smile, which featured Tupac Shakur and was released shortly after the death of B.I.G. Smile remains the only single from Scarface to be certified platinum as it went on to sell more than 2 million copies. June. Following a relatively quiet second quarter, the world of hip hop was lit up by Wu-Tang Clan's album, Wu-Tang Forever. Taking the music world by storm, Wu-Tang Forever debuted at number one on Billboard 200 on the 3rd of June. In its first week, 612,000 copies were sold in the United States alone, with the album going on to be certified quadruple platinum with over two million copies sold. Wu-Tang Forever was without a doubt one of the most definitive albums of the year as it broke record sales. It was also the first rap album to debut at number one on both US and UK mainstream charts. The album also enjoyed critical acclaim earning a nomination for best album at the 40th annual Grammy Awards. On the 24th of June, rapper Twista dropped his third studio album, which he titled Adrenaline Rush. The album contained his hit single, Emotions, which he had released earlier in the year on the 8th of April. Get It Wet was the second hit single to come out of this album, and it was released on October 7th, 1997. More recently, in July 2019, Adrenaline Rush was certified platinum, having sold over 1 million copies. July July began with a bang as Puff Daddy released his debut album on the first day of the month. Debuting at number one on Billboard's 200, the album had the hit single I'll Be Missing You, a tribute to Puff Daddy's very close friend, Notorious B.I.G. The single was a much-loved hit by fans as it had sentimental value. This is what made it very popular, debuting at number one on Billboard's Hot 100. Also debuting at number one from the album was the hit song Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, which went on to be one of the major tunes of the year. Two other singles from the album, It's All About the Benjamins and Been Around the World, debuted at number two on Billboard's Hot 100. No Way Out remains Puff Daddy's best-selling album to date. Critically, the album was nominated for five awards at the 40th Grammy Awards ceremony, with Puff Daddy going on to win the best rap album. The album was stuffed with many features from many close associates of Diddy's, which was why he added the phrase and the family to the album's credits. Featured stars on the album included Notorious B.I.G., Busta Rhymes, Mace, Lil' Kim, Jay-Z, and Twista. On July 15th, female rapper Missy Elliott dropped her debut studio album, Super Duper Fly, to much critical acclaim. The album had the singles The Rain, Super Duper Fly, which was a smash hit of the year, and Sock It To Me which was produced entirely by the then young Timberland. His digital funk and skittery beats were a huge attraction to rap fans. Timberland's signature beats complemented Missy Elliott's staccato rap style and rich vocals in a unique and remarkable way. Missy Elliott's album included guest appearances from Busta Rhymes, Lil' Kim, and Aaliyah. The album was both a critical and commercial success as it was certified platinum with over 1.2 million copies sold. In 2020, Rolling Stones magazine named Super Duper Fly as number 93 on their list of 500 greatest albums of all time. We must also mention that the album topped the US R&B hip hop album charts while debuting at number three on Billboard's 200. By 1997, Bone Thugs and Harmony was a well-known rap group in the music scene. On the 29th of July, they dropped their album, The Art of War, which was well-received by hip-hop fans. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, making it one of the most memorable albums of the year. 
The album would eventually be certified quadruple platinum after starting out with 394,000 sales in the first week. Two of the most notable singles in The Art of War were Look Into My Eyes and If I Could Teach the World. September. September began with Master P dropping his sixth studio album titled Ghetto D. It debuted at number one on the Billboard's 200 and went on to be certified platinum. Exactly 14 days later, on September 16th, Busta Rhymes dropped his album titled When Disaster Strikes, which debuted on Billboard's 200 at number three and also went on to be certified platinum. On the last day of September, rapper Common dropped his third studio album, One Day It Will Make Sense. It was the first album he delivered with his new name, Common, after he changed from his initial name, Common Sense. This was after he was sued by a SKA band who bore the same name, Common Sense. But beyond just marking a change of name, the album, One Day It Will Make Sense, also signaled a change of musical style and tone from Common. He moved away from his former gangster rhetoric to a more intelligent, thoughtful, and soulful style of music that will come to define him as a rapper. In line with this, the album featured appearances from Lauryn Hill, De La Soul, and Erica Badu. October. On the 14th of October, LL Cool J dropped his album Phenomenon, which debuted at number seven on Billboard's 200. The album, which was certified platinum, included one of the hit songs of the year, 4321, which featured Method Man, Red Man, Cannabis, and DMX. The hit single set the ground for a fun rap battle that ensued between LL Cool J and Cannabis, adding some much appreciated beef back into the hip hop scene. November. November came with two landmark albums of the year. The first was from Jay-Z. He dropped the album In My Life, Volume 1, on the 4th of November. While debuting at number three on Billboard's 200, it would go on to be certified platinum. Shaken by the death of his close friend, Notorious B.I.G., Jay-Z toned down on the gangster elements of his music with a pop-leaning performance. The success of the album led to Jay-Z proclaiming himself New York City's best MC in a sly dig at longtime rival Nas. On the 25th of November, Tupac's sixth studio album was released. The album titled Are You Still Down, Remember Me? was made from a large body of work left behind by Tupac before his death. As expected, the album was a huge success, topping the U.S. R&B charts for three straight weeks. The album went on to get quadruple platinum certified. In many ways, 1997 will be remembered as the year that the foundation was set for the success of many future rappers following the demise of Tupac and Biggie. Because of this, many critics regard 1997 as a defining point in the evolution of hip hop. We might have lost one of the most talented rappers of all time in B.I.G., but 1997 was a year in which hip hop showed itself to be a gift that keeps on giving. If you enjoyed this video, let us know by clicking the thumbs up button down below. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss an upload. Thank you very much for watching. I'm your big dog, Dollar Black. See you guys in the next video.